Hello and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and a theme park enthusiast. I am also a huge fan of history. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, and anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. Each day I'm going to share one of my favorite deep cuts with you, so let's take a look at today's stories. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365. It's Christmas in August, friends. On this date in 1946, the world's first theme park opened in Santa Claus, Indiana. The name of the park? Santa Claus Land. Naturally. Santa Claus Land was the brainchild of one Louis J. Koch, a retired industrialist from the Indiana city of Evansville. As the name suggests, it was an amusement park themed around Santa Claus, offering up a way for kids to celebrate Christmas all year long with a real Santa, a toy shop, a restaurant, and Santa-themed rides for the kids. An amusement park in Denmark had been in operation since 1583, though it didn't exactly have roller coasters when it opened. In the 1880s, Coney Island opened Steeple Chase, an amusement park filled with dazzling rides, games, lights, and other attractions. But Santa Claus Land was the first amusement park to base all its rides and other attractions around a common theme, hence the theme park. Just nine years later, another man with a vision of delighting children with themed rides and attractions opened his own theme park on a massive strip of land in Anaheim, California. That man was Walt Disney, and that theme park was Disneyland. Disneyland was a massive hit. Have you heard? And it sparked a major expansion of theme parks across the globe. The rest is history. Even Santa Claus Land itself expanded and is now Holiday World and Splash and Safari. But let's back up. The hamlet of Santa Claus, Indiana, was founded in 1854 and known as Santa Fe until 1856, when the townspeople attempted to register its name with the post office department. That name was not accepted by the post office for some reason, and though it's not entirely clear how the townspeople settled on Santa Claus or why the post office accepted that name, they did, and that's what happened. Weirdly, Santa Claus didn't capitalize on its name too much, but that all changed when Louis Koch, decided he had a plan. His family were developers in the area, and he himself was a man who loved Christmas, or so the legend goes. He and his wife, Clarice, had nine children, which is a lot of time spent pretending to believe in Santa. Koch reportedly thought it was a shame that the hamlet of Santa Claus had all the potential to utilize that Santa energy, but just didn't. He thought it would be disappointing to children to visit a place called Santa Claus and not get to meet Santa. Can you imagine? And so, Santa Claus Land was born. Coke came up with the idea for the park in 1941, and shortly after purchased 260 acres of land to build it. But plans for construction got pushed back a few years due to World War II. The Coke family-run park officially opened in 1946. It wasn't quite on the level of today's theme parks, but it sounds like it was kind of sweet. The park's buildings and entrance were constructed to look like North Pole-esque gingerbread houses. The first ride built was Santa Claus's Land Railroad, a child-sized train modeled after a Baltimore and Ohio locomotive. There was a house of dolls, which was home to 2,000 dolls, and later the Cokes added an animal paddock, reindeer-themed rides, ski shows, and a hall of famous Americans, for some reason. Admission was free until 1955. Santa Claus Land was a popular attraction in the area, but by the 1950s, it was by no means the only amusement park in town. In 1955, Disneyland opened, its opening day a hit so massive that ABC broadcast the entire event live. In the first 10 weeks it was open, Disneyland had 1 million visitors. Not such a huge number by today's standards, and incessant lines, of course, but in 1955, that was a huge deal. Disneyland was such a smash hit that in 1971, after Walt himself had already died, the Walt Disney World Company opened the much bigger Disney World in Orlando, Florida, comprising 43 square miles of land compared to Disneyland's 500 acres. 
That's more than 50 Disney worlds inside of one Disneyland. Soon, Disney parks expanded across the globe. Euro Disney in Paris opened in 1992, and there are parks in Tokyo, Shanghai, and Hong Kong now too. In the States, both Disneyland and Disney World have expanded considerably since they first opened. Disneyland has two parks, and Disney World has four amusement parks and two water parks included in its resort. Here are some fun facts about Disney World. Walt Disney bought the land Disney World is on for only $5 million, and it has a secret underground trash system. The Epcot Gardens grows over 30 tons of fruit and vegetables that the restaurant served to visitors. Epcot's Mission Space Attraction uses more computer power than an actual NASA space shuttle. Can you believe that? Legend has it, too, that one of the ghosts at the Haunted Mansion is missing and haunting the park. But Disney is not the only theme park in town. In 1961, the first Six Flags opened in Arlington, Texas. Now, Six Flags is known for its terrifying roller coasters. But then, Six Flags was a Texas theme park, named after the Six Flags that claimed Texas and its history. Till that Six Flags, the amusement park chain, is a reference to the Six Flags over Texas. Spain, France, Mexico, the Republic of Texas, the U.S., and, uh, unfortunately, the Confederacy. Yep, Six Flags is a partial reference to the Confederate flag. History sucks. Really makes you wonder why you run a history podcast, you know? Now there are tons of theme parks. Universal Studios, the religiously themed Holy Land Experience, the Dolly Parton themed Dollywood, even a place called Diggerland, which is a truck theme park. Santa Claus Land is now Holiday World and is a little bit different than its original park. It has three roller coasters and a safari-themed water park, and it celebrates all holidays, not just Christmas. But we still like to think of it as the little Santa park that started it all. Now, let's talk about music. Today, in 2018, rapper Travis Scott released Astroworld, his third studio album. The album featured a number of guest artists, including The Weeknd, Drake, Juice World, 21 Savage, and Kid Cudi. Astroworld was a huge hit, debuting at number one on the Billboard 200 it was also nominated for a Grammy, and it's been certified platinum. And coincidentally, Astro World was named after a theme park. Six Flags Astro World is in Scott's native Houston, which shut down in 2005. At least it got this tight album to commemorate it. So happy birthday, Astro World. And now for today's final segment, I'll be going back into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on an August 3rd in my life. On August 3rd, 2019, I arrived in LA and got myself some in and out I was staying in an Airbnb right next to it, and I was there for a bunch of sessions that actually ended up creating a large majority of my EP Dawn. I have a love-hate relationship with LA. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. This trip actually ended up being really great. My Airbnb was super nice. And the bed was really comfy, but I was close to the in and out, which I mentioned. And I think, honestly, that was my favorite part. But I'm really glad that that trip worked out because it was still one of my first writing trips for working with people. And something that I still am nervous about even today is working with people. But it really opened my eyes up to what collaboration could be like. And I am so glad with the songs that I made because most of the songs I made that week actually ended up becoming something that I would put on my project and eventually turned into Dawn. Thanks for going back in time with me, and remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Come back tomorrow for more stories from the past. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's